My name is Lieutenant Navy Celine Faludi, and I'm a Training Development Officer, currently posted to 426 Transport Training Squadron at CFP Trenton. Part of the reason that I love my job is that I work with lots of different people who are amazing at their careers. In order for the military to be prepared to help with domestic and international operations, a lot of training takes place. Every day, I get to collaborate with people throughout the military who are trying to improve the courses they teach. I help instructors improve the way they teach, and I help manage course administration. One of the coolest things about my job are the different opportunities I've had. I've spent time on ships and a submarine. I've seen personnel practice dropping material off the back of a plane. I've driven on a test course, I've been the drummer for a dragon boat team, and I've done adventure training on a canoe camping trip through Algonquin Park. But for sure, the most rewarding experience for me was being one of the organizers for a new outreach program named Women in Force, in which civilian women of all ages came to CFB Borden and learned what it was like to work for the military. Because of my passion for working with people, I wanted to participate in this resiliency program and describe a situation I had with stress over 14 years ago. At the time, I never would have thought that in the future I'd have a really exciting career or that I'd be able to make it through all of the negative feelings I was experiencing. However, I've learned that stress can happen to anyone and I want to encourage you to speak up if you ever find yourself in a similar state of mind. Getting a proper education was something my family always encouraged for me. The idea was that if I made good grades, I'd be rewarded with a well-paying job. But back in the autumn of 2006, a negative experience with stress convinced me that all my studying had gone to waste as I thought that I was going to fail a really important course in the last year of my bachelor degree in university. During this time, I was already dealing with some difficult situations. My living circumstances had changed. I was very isolated, living with a new roommate who I didn't know well, in a new apartment, in an area where I couldn't speak the local language. I was far away from my friends and family, and I was on a tight budget. One day, a professor told me I was doing poorly in their course. I had been studying and trying my hardest, but nevertheless, my efforts weren't paying off. I figured I probably wouldn't pass the course and that the chances of continuing my studies and getting a good job were gone. It might sound overdramatic now, but at the time, the stakes were really high for me. I was, a, I was unsure what a failure in the coming year would mean. The possibility of living a life that felt safe and secure was compromised. I started losing sleep to the point that I wasn't sleeping at all. I stopped eating properly and soon lost my appetite. I became so exhausted that it was hard for me to think clearly. And the problem with my professor seemed worse as the days passed. I felt like a zombie. It was impossible for me to go about my day-to-day -day life in a normal way, and things just seemed hopeless. The irony is, before the end of the fall semester, it turned out that regardless of the negative responses from the professor, I passed the course with a pretty decent mark. The experience wasn't the end of the world, although it had seemed like it had been. In the new year, when I returned to school for the winter semester, I had a medical appointment. And during this routine appointment, a nurse asked me how I was doing. When I told him that I had recently gone through some extreme stress and still was feeling exhausted by it, he asked me if I'd be interested in meeting with him weekly to learn how I could better handle my stress in the future. During the few times I met with him, I learned about the importance of taking care of myself by eating healthy, getting a good night's rest, maintaining my social relationships, and keeping failures in perspective. 
I realized that I hadn't been doing any of these things, and when a few challenges came my way, I was not prepared to deal with them. After those sessions and learning about how to handle stress, I felt like I had turned a corner and things were improving. I started giving myself little challenges to help build my confidence back up. I told myself that I would start eating better, and I did. I told myself that I would quit any bad habits, and I did, which was something that I was really proud of. In the military, we learn about a similar approach to managing stress. We call it the mental health continuum model. When things are going well, we are normally in the green or even yellow. However, in the fall of that year, I was in the orange or red and needed support to help get me back on track. Now that I understand the way stress works, I can monitor myself and gauge where I'm at on the spectrum. When things start feeling intense or somewhat unmanageable, I know I need to slow things down, simplify, and treat myself kindly by avoiding negative self-talk. We're fortunate that we live in a time where talking about mental health is encouraged. For some, COVID-19 has made things even more isolating. It's important that if you find yourself isolated or stressed out, you reach out and talk to someone. It's not a sign of weakness to get help. In fact, it's a sign of strength in that you know yourself and you know what you need to be healthy. Good luck to you and take care of yourself.